Pop up. Hi, hello, I'm George and I do home staging but virtually. In this video, I'm going to show you and explain you how you can create the room geometry for this complex space and set up the lighting as well. And if you're wondering, this is a tutorial for more advanced users. So if you're new to this, go and watch the video right there and you will, you will start acquiring those basic skills in virtual staging. When you're finished with that, you can come back and rewatch this video again. And without further ado, let's crack on. Hey, and I almost forgot and to apologize. In this video, my mouse rec cursor is not recorded because simply I forgot to record it. So don't worry, I will be narrating everything for you step by step so you will be able to learn absolutely everything which I'm showing in this video. Let's dive in. Just before I go to bed, I decided to check what is happening in the Facebook group. And obviously at 2100, Brendan have asked question, where is the best place to start your box for height? What do you put in the ceiling as a bulkhead? And what is the correct way to set up the lighting in this fairly complex room? Obviously the most complex um, part of this space is the ceiling. And, that, and this was my answer to her question. Of course, I'll make a tutorial and this is the tutorial. As always, I started by importing my image into the viewport and setting up the ground plane. Then I checked the output size. Obviously, every single virtual staging should start with those steps. And then I, I simply knew that the space will be around the average 8.8 .8 feet or 2.5 meters or something like that. And here is how you, what is the best place to start the, the room in, the, as in this shape and size and complexity. Obviously the corners. And in this case, that corner was like almost at the center of the image. And this is the tricky, basically this is the, the golden nugget. Every complex room should start from the center because the center of the image is not skewed. Every, every corner of the image is obviously distorted by the lens, a photographer, or if you have tried and tweaked anything, it will be distorted. But the center of the image is most likely to not be distorted that much. Then I went on and created the vanishing lines. Of course, uh, I've played with them for a while until I found the best angle and I, I was satisfied with my achievement. So as you can see, it is a back and forth process. It's not just a one way. And then I went on and created my camera because having a camera, it saves you tons of time. If you move suddenly something and if you don't have a camera, you will start all over again. And always make sure to lock your camera. And as you can see, after even I've set up my camera, I still continued tweaking. And here is me starting to create the geometry of the room. I converted this object in a, as a double poly and I started adding edge loops. It's just simply making sure to match every geometry on the ceiling. And if you ask why I'm st I've started from the ceiling, because simply it is the most complex part of the space. Do not start from the walls or especially the walls on the left and on the right hand sides, because as I've already mentioned, the distortion is a lot and this will not project anything good onto your geometry. But with starting from the center of the image and building everything up to the ceiling or up to the most complex part of the image, I was able to recreate the ceiling, as you can see, fairly accurate. Those are simple operations, just adding loops, inserting them, and then moving them to align with the, um, the geometry and then extrude more loops and more geometry. And as you can see, I allow myself to tweak tiny bits of the geometry because for the sake of the tutorial simply if I have to resolve this as I should in a professional manner I have to go back and retweak the vanishing lines but sometimes you can cheat if those are really minor movements onto your geometry simply you can just cheek cheap um, cheap cheek <laughs> cheat and move around what you need to move but do not make brave movement like <laughs> maybe half a meter or more because this will distort a lot of your scene and later on down the, down the process you will have problems with your lighting 
and as you can see I went back and forth and as this is a problem and uh, it obviously it's distorted it comes from the distortion of the image so I had, to, I had to move the entire wall backwards and make the kitchen back um, moved by 30 or 40 centimeters additionally and my scene was almost done and my next step was to create my floor obviously you need a flow in order to project and cast shadows from the shadow capture material which was the next step of the virtual staging and as you can see i've just I'm, i was searching for the plane and here is my plane which i've just scaled up and that was my floor for that moment in time and in the next step i went on and opened the material browser and I found my shadow catcher which was saved as favorite in the materials and I simply added my map to it and I altered some of the projection modes because I was playing with something else earlier before that in that day. So here is the, the photo and I've attached the photo to the tone mapper and as usual you know what is the drill there. So if you're not sure go and watch the video right now on the right hand uh, top uh, part of the screen and it, yeah you know the drill so i they, uh, went on and uh, added this map to the environment map and i created a cylinder to see what is happening in my scene after trying to render the interactive rendering i decided to set up the post-production um inside the corona as you know you have to boost up the highlights compress up to two three or something or maybe the contrast as well and as you can see there, there there are slight shadows appearing already and this will work for every single render engine v-ray corona even for blender for cinema 40 doesn't matter it's absolutely the same uh the same steps then i went on creating the lighting the lighting well this is maybe the most complex uh, part of creating um the lighting because you have to be able to set up your light planes or light cylinders or light spheres or whatever you choose there to pick in my case these were um, discs because i i thought they are representing the most accurately the the current environment in there or of course the image is not the best ones i mean it's overexposed areas blue light and undertoned areas desaturated areas maybe the worst possible scenario doesn't matter in virtual staging we can solve absolutely everything because of i've already built my scene fairly accurate i'm able to um, place my discs where exactly they are this will create really decent results and realistic uh, looking lighting as you can see on the top top um, view everything is where it should be then the next step is to create the other parts of the lighting where we don't have a ceiling or the ceiling is flush. I've missed that bit, I didn't recreate that because I don't need it and I know I will not have any shadows casted onto the ceiling there, hence I didn't need it this part being built. And then I went on and selected this light and I have made a copy and then I tried. Simply if you try and make basically position the light where you think it is it might not be exactly there this is why i selected the light and i snapped the light to the the next the, the previous level of the ceiling where the wall meets the ceiling this means that i mean obviously in this space we have two levels of the, of the ceiling so you have to be able to match those two levels so not every time what you see from the camera is true so go and check all the times from the top view perspective view and just simply go around and see what's happening in your scene and then i decided to copy those cylinders and to make them fall and check the lighting and perhaps i was feeling that this image was lacking something in that was exposure so i boosted the exposure up to one to see if it's performing well and as you can see it's still missing something in the next step this is what i did i created a sphere and i made a chrome material and i applied that material to the sphere to check if the reflections are properly set up as well in those spaces where you have different tones of the light as for example underexposed and overexposed areas you have to really check and carefully plan 
what you're going to design there because if you have lots of chrome and glass uh, materials this will be a problem because you have to match those or at least deal with them in, in a way because your chrome and glass materials will have awkward reflections the next step i decided to add a couple of furniture and scatter them across the room basically i've created a small layout of a living room and I needed that in order to show you the next step of the setting correctly light this lighting environment because having only those blue casting lights i mean blue light i don't know they, they're horrible actually but that that wasn't all so I, I i felt i needed something else in order to convey the full realism into this image and as you can see i've played along here and there i mean <laughs> it was fun I just having a fun with those furniture but here is the trick to achieve what i wanted i felt that i have to change the background slightly to boost up those tones so i entered the photoshop and i started playing with the camera roll functions shadows highlights up and down a little bit of vibrance maybe maybe i had to feel i i needed to decrease that blue light i know in virtual staging i've said multiple times you do not change the image at all but i didn't change the image in in a way that i wanted to, to cheat i just wanted to to make those tones subtle to desaturate that blue intense intense light and as you can see i've achieved that then i i wanted to paint slightly the carpet i i didn't want to change the color of the carpet i just wanted to paint a slight tone of beige or orange or something just to make it more fun and interesting and obviously if you have instructions from your clients do not change anything just stage it as it is and send the image basically submit it to them but if you want really to achieve good results in this virtual staging image to work to to, to be loved by the, the buyers or whoever is your client you have to put time i mean you know obviously additional efforts in it i didn't invent the color from my mind I, I used the selection basically a sample from the lighting which already was into that small storage space over there after that i painted the entire layer and i lowered the opacity and i saved the image and went back to the 3ds max and of course when you make a changes you have to reload all of the maps and i just went on reloaded the maps into my viewport configuration and my shadow cacho material of course and instantly we have improved image we have bright nice colors and the lighting is matching our original photography which we started it was dark and gloomy now it's bright and inviting and those blue lights are not that bad guys let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or this video was really helpful to you or it wasn't helpful to you just let me know and guys leave a like or dislike because it's free and it will motivate me and it will help the youtube algorithm to promote this video further far and wide and now if you're new to this virtual staging go and watch this video right now on the screen and you will start your journey see you next time